you know, I was asked this question, so what does a $1,000 speaker do that a $500 speaker can't do? And it's a very legitimate question, <laughs> but one that I don't have a good answer for because it would depend on the speaker, right? So in other words, but if I just stayed within a line, let's say ELAC, right? And we went from the ELAC uh, debut B6.2, which is $300 a pair, to the ELAC Unify UB5 uh, bookshelf speaker, which is $500 a pair. And then you went to the, the equivalent version of the floor standing speaker, right? So the UB5 floor stander, whatever that's called, UF5, I suppose. Um, what do you get? Well, when you go from the debut to the UB5, the bookshelves, staying with bookshelves, right? I would say the, the, uh, the UB5 uh, is a concentric uh, mid-range tweeter, which the 6.2 doesn't have. So it automatically gives you, or not automatically, but by design gives you uh, more precise uh, imaging and focus and sound stage. Um, that's good. Um, but then you see that it gets complicated because the UB5, in my experience, is a very tough to drive speaker. I don't remember what its sensitivity number is, but I, whatever it is, it's, it's hard. You need a, an amp that can deliver current to that speaker. Same for the, the floor standing version. They are power hungry speakers. The Unify series, right? The debut series, which is designed to be used with more affordable electronics, isn't power hungry. So we're not comparing uh, apples to uh, apples in this case. We're comparing completely different systems that would be used with those speakers. Now it's funny, the UB5, uh, the bookshelf speaker, is a $500 a pair speaker, but you ain't gonna use it and, get, and be terribly happy if you use it with a $500 receiver. You're gonna really just need to spend more like over a thousand easily. Something that really has uh, current capability, meaning the ability to drive four ohm speakers with ease not just drive them with ease. So it gets more expensive. So, but let's say we were comparing the <laughs> UB5, $500 pair of speakers to the Magnapan uh, MMG-I, which is $650 a pair. Just wildly different speakers. Obviously one is a panel, the Magnapan is a panel speaker, it's a dipole, it's flat, it's an inch and a quarter inch thick. Uh, just as much sound comes out of the back of it as comes out of the front, so its place, room placement demands are completely different than a box speaker. Um, it, when you stand up, a lot of the high frequencies go away with the MMG, but it's more open, it's more transparent than the UB5, and actually easier to drive. Not, it's not a super easy to drive speaker, but I'd say uh, e easier, easier. But the thing about these $500, $1,000, $2,000 comparisons is it leaves out the idea that your, your, your room, your demands are site specific, specific to, to you. You know, is your room a closet? You know, is it 11 by 12 feet or is it uh, 14 feet by uh, 35 feet? You know, um, do you listen mostly to loud you know, EDM music, or you listen to Beethoven string quartets, you know, or you listen to movies some of the time as well. Do you tend to play loud? Um, do you like acoustic music? Lots of different things go into the mix of which would make one speaker better than another. But to, to circle back to the point of this, beginning of this uh, vlog today, is what do you get when you spend more on a speaker? Well, usually, to be overly simplistic, you get something that makes more bass and can play louder, a little louder, with ease, depending on how much the gradations of prices here and, and box sizes or panel sizes of the speakers. More money buys generally bigger speakers now, but not always. I'm going to review eventually the, these Harbeth uh, um, P3 ESR 40th anniversary speakers, which are smallish bookshelf speakers, and they're $2,800 a pair. So it's not that the more money always, we're always talking about bigger speakers, sometimes we're talking about better speakers. The Harpeth mid-range is just wonderful. It's just luscious. Humans sound more human than they do with most speakers over the Harpeths. Certainly even compared to, let's say, the, uh, the Kef 
LS50, which is sort of a similar size, right? So if someone said in that case, so Steve, if I spent $1,500 for the LS50s, what do I get from my extra $1,350 by moving up to the Harpeth? Well, um, much better mid-range, more warmth, more fullness, it's a fuller, bigger sounding speaker, the Harbeth is. Um, and even though the, uh, the, the CAF LS50 is a coaxial speaker, you'd think it would image better, but in my experience, actually the CAF is a better imaging, meaning more specific, more open, uh, focused, bigger sound stage, all that kind of stuff. I think the Harbeth is a better speaker than the LS50, but hey, it's almost twice as much money. So, uh, I just said a few minutes ago that what we're talking about here is site specific, but it's also specific to the specific drivers that we're comparing $500 versus $1,000 or $1,000 versus $1,500 or $2,000 speakers. I, I just don't like those broad generalizations. It just doesn't work because so many other factors are at play. So, no. I, I can't I can't, can't come up with snappy answers as to what you get when you double your budget from $500 to $1,000, other than the obvious. If you push me really hard, I'd say, okay, it'll play louder and make some more bass, okay? Are you happy now? But, you know, maybe you don't care about playing louder. Maybe making more bass isn't something you're, you're looking for. Maybe it's the sound quality that's important to you. And again, that's harder to nail, you know, pin down to a number or a specific ratio of, of price. It is specific to the speakers that we're talking about, A versus B. So sorry to once again possibly uh, disappoint you if you wanted uh, a quick and ready answer to what do you get when you spend more money on speakers. Oh, but I gave you the answer. Plays louder, makes more bass. But the other answer is the more complicated answer, more nuanced answer, which is the more truthful answer. You could assume that bigger speakers with bigger woofers play louder and make more bass. It's a generalization, but it's usually true. I think I'm beating that horse to death. Uh, my name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show, which does come up daily, in case you haven't noticed that. And if you like it, I urge you strongly to subscribe, like it, hit that little like button underneath there. Uh, leave comments, leave questions. I can't answer them all, or most of them even. Um, I have a life beyond making videos. Looking at a few hundred comments every day is takes time. When it first goes up, I am more likely to look than I am later on. Anyway, I think you got the point, right? So come back often. See you soon. Thanks for watching.